And what do we mean by delegation? So a lot of business owners have trouble with this concept. If we had to say delegate sales, for example, it is this giant thing in their mind and that they would need to delegate. And they would look at you and say, it's impossible to delegate sales. Um, so it's almost like if I said, just build a car. Nice car. Um, so we know that cars are not built all at once, but they're actually built through an assembly of steps. So instead of the finished product, what you are thinking about in this instance, for example, delegating sales, it is actually about breaking up the finished product down into its individual parts. For example, when Tesla is assembled, there is a guy who puts the plastic rails on the door frame, uh, another who installs the door frame, and another guy who puts on mud flaps. So I'm not an expert at cars, so I could have got this whole thing wrong. Uh, but the point is, is to say that when a car is assembled, it's assembled in stages, in pieces. Every task is broken down into its individual parts. So this is what you as an owner need to think about. Not about delegating sales, as an example, or delegating customer service, but what are the finite, discrete activities that make up sales? What are the parts of sales that roll up together to make up this entity? So um, if we look at, um, so just to also say that a lot of business owners are unconsciously competent. Um, they'll say, I'm a good salesperson. Um, you just have it or you don't. I don't know how to train salespeople. Um, but how, however, you'll find that when you start to pull apart the pieces, um, the whole, in the whole sales function, they're actually, for example, act discrete steps that one could take. Um, so, for example, and this is an example of a sales process, um, and whether you have a product-based business or a service-based business, uh, business, the sales process is, you know, is applied to some extent. So you'll have some sort of... Um, start off where the entrepreneur would take some steps to prospect. The next phase would be some sort of discovery or needs assessment for a customer. And he could train someone to do that assessment. The next discrete set of steps would be taken to close the sale. And in most cases, there's an onboarding component as well. So the secret to delegating rainmaking activities is not to delegate the whole thing, hook, line and sinker, but first to break it up into its discrete parts and start training individuals to handle each individual part, like an assembly line worker assembling a car. So this leads us nicely to talk about the four stages of delegation. So I'm going to be brutally honest with you here, and you may not like what I have to say, but uh, most business owners are very bad if not terrible delegators because they don't get it when people don't understand what they want they just tell them to go do it and they very seldom provide instructions for going about how to do it um, and they very seldom show or provide the ideal outcome they want the level of information they want and most importantly the level of decision making authority that they are willing to give their employee and the Achilles heel of most entrepreneurs is that they delegate providing incomplete instructions. You know, just go do it. So the delegation tool has four stages of delegation and each stage of delegation is increasing levels of autonomy. And as you move up a stage, you as the employee being delegated to um, move, have more and more um, decision making discretion. So the four stages start at the very bottom. I can just have in trouble with my slides. Yeah. So the four stages start at the very bottom of the authority scope. And it is about follow my lead, which is about I trust you to follow my instructions. Let me know if you have any questions about the process or suggestions for how to make it better. So 
Here's exactly how I want it done. Here's an SOP, an instruction manual. Do it this way. Let me know if you have any questions about the process or suggestions for how to make it better. So this is follow my lead and is level one delegations. If you are an employee and you get a follow my lead delegation task, it should be accompanied with a video, an instruction manual, a set of steps the employee can take to follow a system. So it is the lowest level of autonomy you can give. Um, there is a task that's really important. It's documented effectively, and it's just about following the instructions. And this typically works well with junior employees or uh, when onboarding new employees on specific business processes. So the second level of delegation is higher up the autonomy scale, and it is what we call research and report. I trust you to think like an owner. Please research some options for completing this task. Outline which options you considered, the pros and cons to each, and which option you would choose if you were the owner of the business. So I don't have an instruction manual for you, I don't have a, a set of rules for you to follow. Please think like an owner and then come back to me with some suggestions. So you can use a concept that I once heard a coach share. And it's something um, that is called the yesable solution. It is a tactic an owner can use to tell his or her employee, look, I want you to come to me with questions but only those which I have the ability to say yes or no to. It forces the employee to go away and do some, ooh, kept on the slide, yeah, it, it forces the employee to go away and do some research and come back with some alternatives. So instead of the employee coming to you and saying, oh my gosh, customer is so angry, I don't know what to do which is putting the responsibility of answering the questions in the hands of the business owner to solve, the employee is given a yesable mandate and has to come back to the boss with options. Look, this customer is really angry. Can I give them a discount? To which you can simply say yes or no. So this is a yesable question and it is the underpinnings of the research and report delegation format where the employee needs to go away do some research, do some thinking, and come back and report what they discover and make a recommendation. The onus, by the way, on the final decision still sits with the owner, which is the key distinction between the second and third level of delegation. So the third level is, um, I trust you to do what you think is right. Please keep me in the loop with regular updates or progress. You are trusting the employee to do what they think is right. So I want you to go away, look at the alternatives, make the decision based on the, thing, on the way you think you would if you were the owner of this company. The nuance is I still want to be kept in the loop. I don't want you to make decisions willy-nilly without circling back and letting me know what you have decided. So if there is something that you as an owner want to be kept abreast of, but don't want decision-making authority over it, but still want to be kept in the loop, this is giving your team level three delegation. So if the team wants to implement a new process, give them the go ahead to do what needs to be done, but to keep you on the loop on the outcomes and the areas of challenge which sets it up nicely for the fourth level of delegation, which is simply just do it. I trust you to take this task off my plate, run with it with the best of your ability. There's no need to check back with me unless you have questions or need my input. You simply cut the cord and let the employee run with it. So if, um, for example, someone has the um, responsibility of paying the electricity bill in the factory, you don't, they don't need to tell you that they paid the electricity bill every month, but obviously if the lights go off, you may take notice and ask some questions, which is actually quite a bad example given load shedding, but um, <laughs> I hope you get my point. So typically the biggest mistake that we see um, owners making is mixing and matching the stages of delegation 
Some owners truly want their employees to completely run with it and never report back. However, employees feel beholden to tell the entrepreneur what they have discovered and then force the decision back on the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur gets frustrated and says, I told you to run with it. In another instance, the owner has not given the employee the decision-making authority. The employee doesn't feel like they have the budget or the discretionary decision-making to make a decision, so they are left feeling paralyzed. So some employees think do it actually means do it when the, uh, when the entrepreneur is actually a control freak and really wants to be in control of every decision. In that case, the employee thinks they have level four um, delegation when in actual fact, the entrepreneur is giving them level two. Again, it is important that the entrepreneur is clear on what tasks do you want to delegate? For example, what discrete parts of sales or customer service um, you are, um, so what are the discrete parts of sales, the sales process that are delegatable? And once you discover those discrete tasks, figuring out what stage of delegation are you willing to give that employee to go and do? So understanding the different stages of delegation and what level of autonomy and budget you're willing to give your employees to run with the task is important. You will become better delegators in the end, which will ultimate, ultimately help you to achieve the goal of building a company that can thrive without you pulling all the shots or making all the rain. So again, in the workbook um, is just an exercise which looks at um, you really are thinking about the four levels of delegation and what are the discrete tasks that you could delegate and what delegation level would be applicable to you.